Morning, I, I've just uh, sketched out uh, this sort of simple view, simple hills, a bit of distance, some trees on the on the slope, um, a, a bit of a, a building here. I'm going to try and paint around that, and some rocks, just a typical rocky shore. Could be anywhere in North Cornwall, Devon. So I'll wet the paper all over, it's Fabriano, 130 pounds. The, the sheets are 15 inches by 11, which is quarter, quarter imperial. Okay, that'll do. Wet and wet, using the Ron Ranson 2 inch hake and the Ron Ranson palette of lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint grey and burnt sienna. The thing is about working from other artists, or copying, which is what I do, I don't copy runs, but, but I used to. Um, you, you eventually develop your own style, your own, your own handwriting, and people can look at your paintings and say, oh, Fred did that, or well, that was done by Abigail, because the style is the signature. And uh, there are a number of this painting, like, well, with the, with, uh, the, the, the big brush, watercolour, Burnt umber, it's a lovely, lovely colour, but I don't want that yet. I'm just going to wet, or go over the wet paper with just a bit of a mix of, of colours. Raw sienna. I was going to paint around that, didn't I? I'll go back to that, I'll uh, do that, that house when the paint's dry. So, a um, bit of a blue, bit of, bit of grey, bit of uh, alizarin. It's got a nice sort of... Uh, I've got all the mass on this side, so I don't want to put all the mass with the clouds over there as well. So I'll just, just Blend the water. Okay, and I'll just stiffen up a little bit of that cloud. Okay, that, that'll do. I can put a bit of a weaker mix in here. Okay, that, that, that'll create a sort of an interesting look. The clouds are smaller as they get to the horizon. Leaving gaps so that the light shines through. And I'll do a mix of those colours in the, in the background. Change the colour, put in some uh, bit of umber, a bit of lemon yellow. With the painting at uh, the sort of 30 degree angle, the paint doesn't run down so much, it's, it is because I Made that a bit, uh, a bit wet. Anyway, just reclip it. Okay, that's gone down a bit further. What I'll do, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll change the the horizon in there. In the series of paintings that I'm doing at the moment, I'm uh, using thick paint. No. Because by, by using paint 
stiff. It actually does register against the uh, the wet surface behind. But you've got to learn to get your washes just about just about uh, thick enough. Okay. So that would be a bit of bit of land there. And we we could turn this into sort of a lake picture, so we'll just put in some of this uh, kind of here. And they get that dark mix in there to show the reflection. So this would be a lake from this view now. Doesn't matter, it's just painting. Now, I love landscape. I'm not interested in portraits or animal paintings at all. It's not what turned me on 45 years ago where I decided I wanted to learn to paint and draw. I don't practice drawing other than on the paper prior to painting, but that's good enough for me. I just love trees and skies, reflections, quietness in a painting. I can develop some of that, but it's just a little bit wet there, so I'll start to... I'll give that a bit of a dry. Take your headphones off. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll do some stuff here. So we we'll have a bit of bit of warm, bit of warm colouring, colouring here. Different colours. Bit of green. Bit of blue. I'm mixing that. And get a bit of dark. Warm, dark, green. Right, now we'll go back to light. I'll work around the, the, the house. It's easier to do this really than to scrape it out from dark paint, although that, that is a great technique. I'll put a little bit of bit of dark green in there. Putting a bit of foliage on here. Ooh, flooding in North London. I'm mm. going to carry that green theme. Down there. Sort of awesome in colours. And I'll put some uh, trees on the top here. Okay.
So that's that's a real bit of interest in a bit of barren slope. But thick paint again. My yellow burnt sienna I, I put out yesterday from the tube, but they haven't dried yet because I keep the paper wet. Okay, well, we, something's happening there. Ah, uh, right, okay. Now, I want some light on the top of that slope here. So, a bit, a bit of, uh, bit of burnt, burnt umber and a bit of sienna, a bit of yellow. So I can put some rocks and stuff on here. The, the paint's grey, it mixes very well with the uh, burnt umber. Okay, now some raw sienna. Then I'll put in the rocks. Okay. <coughs> so nice browns and blues, bit of blue in there. Sort of rocky shore, on a rocky shore. Keeping reds and blues. And this just so I can use my card on this and model the whole thing. Now, card, just a bit of plastic, credit card, card, I don't, whatever. Just Okay, we'll put a few in in here. I, I usually go over the top and do this. But there's lovely to do. Now I was just adding a little bit of a <coughs> okay, so that looks right. Now that's drying off nicely. Maybe I should put just a little bit of um, detail on there. Bit of warm.
Right, I'll just clean out that when it's uh, dry, just to give a, a, a light border between the reflection and what's above it. Let's put a little bit on there, there's a little bit flat, so I'll use a bit of blue. Just a bit too much. Okay, so that gives a bit of bit of detail in that cliff or that hill behind, in front of the hills. Okay, so letting that dry, I'm going to use my half inch flat now. I'm going to put a, a slate roof in Cornwall. That most of the tiles are are grey, the slate. So we'll have fairly light slate. Leave some little bits of white showing around the, the edges and a bit of shadow in, in there. And then we'll put in a shadow. Burnt Umber is a lovely nondescript colour for, but it's used very weak for sand and all sorts of applications. And we'll put it slightly darker around the, around the corner. I'm being careful to try not to touch the wet other side of that because it will mingle and I don't really want it to mingle. Okay, that'll do. Just, just, a, just a little bit of interest on the side of that hill there. Now I want to put in some heavier stuff in it, but I'm going to use the rigger for that. Just a three inch rigger, or anything that makes, makes a mark. Oops. So using the, the edge, so we can have green, just burnt umber, lemon yellow, and plains grey, a bit of water, and just just some just a bit of nothing really. I'll use a smaller one, I've got a smaller one here somewhere. There it is. I hope I'm not masking it. No problem with it. Very difficult trying to, to organise the angle of the camera. Okay, still waiting for that to dry there. Uh, just a little bit of, bit of dry brush over the uh, water here using the colours that I first used the, the grey, the alizarin, and the, the blue. Just And I'll put a bit of a bit of a 
Right, that, that is all I want to do on that for Sunday. Uh, I'll give it a try. I've got to do a bit more on that house. I've got to put some details on the house. I've a couple of windows. my little half inch, a uh, bit of, bit of grey, bit of blue, bit of umber. Right, that'll do, that's all I'm going to do there. I'll put the uh, the light coloured mount on it. I'll just move a bit of tape just to hold the painting when I take the clips off. Alright, there we are. North Cornish coast. Something like that. Just bring this around a bit. Let's see if I can get a bit square. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right, I'll zoom. Well, I'll zoom in. Take you on a tour. Let's go round to the uh, the distance. That that little bit of a blue wash here, bluey grey wash, just gives a little bit of mystery. I think it just it was a bit wet underneath, obviously, but but it just puts um, some trees, some hedgerows, some deep indistinct detail in the distance. You don't want solid detail. You just want nice light wash washes just to give that mm, there's something there and leave a bit for the viewer to put in I come across go up the hill go up to the top of the hill just some trees on the on the the outline and coming down this old cottage or building dwelling whatever you want it to be is nothing in particular then we'll come down to the foreground where we put our rocks, love doing rocks. It's the easiest way I know how to do complicated planes. You, you've got the light and you've got the dark and the reflection. See, the thing is, you, you don't need a sign pointing to them and say, this is a rock. Just make an impression of it and people, they've got brains and their brains connect all the dots. It looks like a rock, oh yes, it's a rock. You don't have to do portraits of these things, you just need to do suggestions. And it's putting all the suggestions together in one, one place, in one piece of paper, that makes a picture. It's not a great picture or anything, but it's uh, better than I could do when I first started. And I'm sure that goes for you too. Just keep practicing. Practice with your washes. I've not showed you how to do gradated washes or graduated washes, where you start off with a heavier colour on the top and you wet the paper and you drag the wash down on the 30 degree angle. These are all graduated washes by just putting them in in the wet paper and you get lighter as you're going down to the to the horizon but I've suggested the form of those clouds by just my little streaks in the wet paper. paper. Try it for yourself, copy what I do and enjoy yourselves, have fun. See you soon, bye bye.